and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how I make my acorn ink. First of all, I put some acorns in this aluminum pan that I bought at the grocery store. And I just have it on this cookie sheet just to make it easier for me to, to carry it around, take it in and out of the oven, which I'm going to do. But first, I'm going to put in enough water to just cover the acorns. I have to prop it up there a little bit. So, a little bit more. Okay, I think that's good enough. Well, maybe a little more. <laughs> okay, that's good enough. Okay, then recently I read a blog. Usually that's all I do and then I put it in the oven, but you, recently I read a blog that you can add some vinegar um, to the water and I believe that helps preserve your acorns. So I'm going to try a test. I'm going to add a little bit of vinegar to this one and of course I don't ever measure anything, so just a little bit. I don't think it was a lot. And then I have another pan prepared and I'm just putting water in this one and then we'll see if there's any difference. Okay, the next thing I do is just put these two pans in the oven for about an hour and a half, maybe two, and I set it to 325. I'm going to check it every 30 minutes just to make sure the water hasn't boiled off or evaporated. And that's about it. Here are my pans after about two hours. Sorry, that got fogged up there. And then I just turned off the oven and left the acorns in overnight. And this is what they look like the next morning. The ink looks really dark. I like the ink really dark. Um, and I'll say this later on too, but if you want a lighter ink, just add more water than I did. And I have my two pans. I labeled one with a V for vinegar just to see if there is a difference. And um, the next thing I'm gonna do is show you how I dye my papers. So that's my, pretty much the process of making the ink. So I poured my two liquids into these jars and, um, sorry, too close there. I put a V with the liquid with vinegar and you can see it didn't look like a lot, but it almost filled up this 16 ounce jar. And I don't really even need that much, to be honest. This one, there's hardly any left because I put some in here. This is the one without vinegar. And this is how I dye my papers. I like to keep things really simple and easy. So I just use the same pan I put some of my liquid in here. Whatever liquid you're using to dye papers, that's what I do. I usually do a lot of tea dye papers. And then I use regular copy paper. This is 28 pound copy paper. I use whatever brand is handy or convenient. And I just dip each one sheet at a time. Very, very simple in the, in the uh, dye. And you can see what a pretty color that makes. And then I don't worry about it being all even and perfect. And then I just lay it down on some plastic. I've been buying these plastic shower curtains from the dollar store, so they're pretty cheap. I can reuse them, but then I can also toss them and buy new ones when I need to. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm going to keep my two papers separate on separate parts of the um, plastic sheet and I'll put the jars near the papers so that I know which is which. <laughs> then when they're all dry, I'll show you the results. I'm back with my final papers and first I have to apologize because today is a very gloomy, gloomy day and I have glare, shadows, bad lighting. I apologize. I'm hopefully, I will hopefully be able to take better pictures of my papers that I'll post at the end. I think tomorrow's supposed to be a sunny day, so I'll wait until tomorrow to take pictures. Anyway, these are my papers. I'm gonna flatten them overnight under some heavy books because they're a little bit wrinkled, but they're not bad. Um, this is how they turned out, but before I go through a few of them, I wanted to mention some things that I didn't wanna forget. I have a little cheat sheet over here so I don't forget 
what I wanted to say. Um, first of all, something I didn't mention when I put my acorns into the pan and the oven and all, um, I have read different blogs in the past and some people recommend using all the acorn caps or just the other part of the acorn or the whole thing. I obviously just threw everything in the pan and did it that way. It works fine. I like the color of it so I want to keep things really super simple for myself instead of trying to separate the caps and all that from the acorns. Also, most, I mean all of the blogs that I read um, they boil the acorns in water in a pot on top of your on the stove and um, I didn't do it that way to begin with because I didn't have a pot that I wanted to dedicate just for this process um, you should obviously not be cooking in a pot uh, if you do this in a in a pot you shouldn't be using it to cook food that you eat later so I just use those disposable aluminum pans and they work fine so for me anyway um, and to me it's just it's easy you know to put it in the oven and then check on it leave it there overnight get it the next day anyway so you can boil it on the stove if you want to I left my papers in the stove a total of two hours I did check it every 30 minutes and I did add water one time because I thought it was getting low Again, if you want to have a lighter color, just add more water. And then I turned the oven off at two hours and I just left it there overnight to cool off and then deal with it in the morning. But I don't think you have to do that either because the liquid was a pretty good color when I finished after the two hours. And then the last thing I wanted to say is, um, this is my leftover ink. Um, actually two things <laughs> this is the one with the vinegar in it I think the vinegar is used more as a preservative um, because this doesn't last very long um, so I didn't notice any difference in the papers so I put them all together now but they are all um, pretty much the same so I, I don't think vinegar does anything to change the color however one other thing I want to say is I add a little bit of alcohol just the alcohol that you have in your cabinet, nothing special, to the mixture. And I have read that in several blogs. And then I store it in the refrigerator so it will last a little bit longer. It's not going to last forever. It does grow mold eventually. I can't remember how long it took before if I didn't use it all. So just know that. Don't make a huge batch of it thinking it's going to last for a long time. Um, so anyway, having said that, um, here are my papers and I'll show you the fronts have uh, darker spots where the ink pooled up and I like that look myself I really like a kind of grungy messy look myself and that's the back it gets these markings from the plastic that I dry my papers on if you don't like this look you can um, dry them a different way maybe hanging them up and then uh, some people dry them in the oven I have done that in the past is to me it's more time consuming I don't think it's quicker because well maybe overall I don't know but it you just have to really watch your papers every two three minutes to make sure that they're not burning and burnt you know to a crisp so um, I just prefer to lay them out and let them dry and then pick them all up so they pretty much all look like this I love this dark brown color. I like all these markings on the back. I think they're very interesting. So I'm really happy with my papers and they're darker than if I get with tea dyeing, which is what I do a lot of. So I like that for a change. This one got a real dark mark there. And so that's pretty much it. I mean, they all, they're very, very similar as you can see and yet unique in a way. So, um, I think that's all I wanted to say and if you have any questions I'm no expert but feel free to comment below <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, let you know um, if I know the answer and thanks for watching see you next time